Hello guys, I'm Yadika Reddy and welcome to my channel HVR Tutorials. In this video, I will explain about the basics of the extent reports. Which means, first we need to understand what exactly is the extent report. And then I will show you one sample extent report so that you can understand how the UI looks like and what are the features provided by that and all those things, right? And then we will do one side by side comparison of the extent reports over the default test engine reports also. So that you can understand what is missing in the default test engine reports and what is provided in the extent reports also. So based on all these points, you can come to one conclusion like why we need to choose the extent reports over the default test engine reports. So all these points I'm going to clearly explain you in this video guys. So don't worry at all. Right? So these are the very basic and important topics that you need to understand before you jump into this course guys. If you don't understand any of these points, then it will become very difficult to understand the rest of the videos in this course. So that is why please watch this video entirely and understand all these points very carefully. Right? So let's get started. The first thing is what is extent report? Extent report is a third party library that is designed for producing the reports for the automated tests. Right? That means it is not a default library that will come with your automated tools guys. It is a third party library. You have to download and set up this library explicitly. So if you are using Selenium or TestNG or anything, it will not by default come with those tools. It is a third party library that you need to download and set it up in order to use this. Right? And this extent reports only available for the Java and .NET languages guys. It is not available for all the languages. It is only available for Java and .NET languages. So if you are using any of these tools like on based on the Java and .NET, then you can use the extent reports. But if you are using any of the automated tools which developed on top of Python or JavaScript, then you cannot use this extent reports in that area guys. Fine. It is only available for Java and .NET languages. And one more important thing is extent reports is not 100% open source tool guys. Which means extent report has two editions. One is community edition and the other one is professional edition. The community edition is for free to use. But the professional edition, it is a licensed one. So you have to purchase the license in order to use this one, right? So in extent reports, there are some features which are only exclusive to the professional edition, but there are some features which can be used for free of cost. So you no need to purchase any license also guys, because almost every features that you can use from the extent reports is available for free of cost. If you want extensively more, then you can go for the licensing, right? So that is about the extent reports. Now we will see how it looks like and what are the features available on all those things, right? So let me open any browser here. So I'm opening the Chrome browser and let's just search for extent reports here. So while you're searching, you can provide the space if you want to. And if you don't provide the space also, it is fine. The search results will not be impacted based on that space guys, right? So when you search for this, you will get some results, right? So out of all the results, pick the first result, which is extendreports.com. So this is the official website for extent reports, guys. Just click on that. And this is how the UI looks like. But remember guys, this UI changes a lot. That means this user interface of this website will change frequently for every one month or for every 15 days, for every minor version, they are going to change the UI. Okay. So it's a natural thing, right? So every UI will change actually, right? So every website UI changes according to the time. So even if you are watching after six months or something, and if the UI changes also, just look for the documentation inside this one, guys. Okay. Documentation or docs, anything is fine because we want to understand how to work with the extent reports that will be written inside the documentation only. Correct. So just search for the documentation first. So here documentation is directly not written, but there is an option called docs. So let's pick the docs only. So in this website for all the previous versions of the extent reports also doc versions are available guys. That means documents are available only for version one. It is not available, but you can see version two, version three, version four, version five. So as of today, the latest version is version five in extent reports. So until version five, the documents are available. So tomorrow version six or version seven comes also, they will update here. Fine. So when you mouse over on version 5, you can see there are three things here. Java, .NET and Clo. Java and .NET are languages, we know, right? Clo is like kind of a reporting server, guys. Okay, we are not going to see that one. But we are going to just learn the Java part. Correct? So just click on Java here. Even if the UI changes a lot also, you can easily navigate. 
it's not a very difficult thing guys okay remember that it is not a very difficult thing fine so this is the documentation for version 5 of java language fine so if you want to know more details like what exactly extent reports is and how many types of versions are available i mean like community version pro version all those things you can get to know from here if you are migrating from previous versions what you need to do and what you need to keep in mind all those things are mentioned here fine so first we want to understand how exactly it looks like right we want to see the ui of the extent reports correct so for that what you need to do you need to find the code in this website where exactly the code is written so if you see there is an option called a complete example here right so just click on that maybe tomorrow that option might change but just try to see this kind of option okay relatable option maybe so in this you can read this statement guys the example is also available online here so just click on this one i'm going to open in the new tab so this is how the extent reports actually look like guys even if you develop in your local system this is how your extent reports looks like fine so let me open the side by side comparison for default reports also uh, in my last video we have already seen like how the test ng default reports looks like right so first let's open that one also within this go to the test output folder and open the index.html so this is the default report that is generated by test ng and this is the report that is generated by extent report so now you tell me which one is looking more beautiful so even before you come to the conclusion first let me show you what exactly options available in the extent reports and all those things then you decide which one is looking beautiful and which one you have to actually pick okay so it's your choice basically fine so when you open the extent reports there are some tabs mentioned here guys in the left side so one tab is like test and one tab is for exceptions and one tab is for like tags or groups or you know uh, we can also say category and another one is for devices and then authors and then dashboard so there are different kinds of tabs here so when you click on the test tab it will show you all the test cases that you have executed with the status also fine so these are all the test cases that i have executed and in each test case when you click on any test it will show you the log information also in every test we will try to log some information right so that entire log information also you can see and whenever the test is failed you can capture the screenshot also right whenever the, whenever the test is failed or whenever the test is passed based upon our requirement so if you want to attach the screenshot you can do that so this is how the screenshot looks like when you attach it to the extent reports and if you want to assign any exception like because of some exception maybe your test is failed and you want to log that exception details you can do that you see the extent uh, exception details also you can log okay so there are so many things that you can do guys you can log the information you can capture the screenshots and attach and you can also see the start time and end time and how much time it actually took and you can also see the search bar on the top like if you want to search any test cases directly you can do that see when i type sc all the matches with sc are coming here right so when i type c all the matches are coming so you can search and you can list all the test cases with along with the status and screenshots and log files and if you want to see how many test cases are failed because of how many exceptions you can just click on the exception details so it will show you all the exception details from your test report also guys okay in one go you can see because of which exception how many test cases are failed that also you can get to know and if you want to group your test cases in our cucumber we have something called tags right and similar way we have uh, something called groups in test ng right so if you want to categorize your test based on the groups that means if you want to see the result based on the group like how many are passed in the smoke group and how many are failed in the sanity group then you can just click on this one and you can get to know how many are passed from each group and how many are failed from each group also right and you can get to know the devices thing also like maybe you are executing your test cases in multiple devices or maybe multiple browsers like chrome browser firefox browser like that right so when you are executing in multiple devices or multiple browsers if you want to see the pass percentage in each device then you can get to know from here guys okay and then author so it's not like always only one person will be implementing all the automation test cases right sometimes what happens you might be implementing some test cases and your friend might be implementing some other test cases but when the failure comes he will try to show you that this is your uh, test case only right he will project that you have developed this test case 
but just to, to overcome these kind of scenarios right what you can do you can add one parameter called author or something in your test and you can uh, you know log that author information also into the report so whenever the test is failed you can get to know who is the author of the test and whose test cases are failing mostly also right so you can easily tell like okay yadagiri reddy test cases are failing most and john test cases are passing most or vice versa correct and then dashboard so for all the automation testers uh, when they execute the automation they'll mainly go for the test tab to see which is failed and what is the issue and all right but from management perspective they don't bother about all these things like what is the log what is the screenshot all these things are not concerned for the management people all they need is stats the statistics of your entire execution so when you go to dashboard it will give you beautiful statistics guys you see when your execution started and when your execution is ended and on top it will show you when your report is generated and how many test cases are passed and how many are failed and here it will show you with the chart also and within each test case you might have multiple steps also right like how many steps are passed and how many failed and how many log events are passed and how many log events are failed all these things it will show you and if you are executing them in multiple environments like multiple devices and all those informations also will be logged here right tag wise information and device wise information and author wise information everything you will get to know from the dashboard guys so this is one of the beautiful feature provided by extend reports fine right? and also there are some shortcuts also so to improve your productivity there are some shortcuts like when you open this one right if you press p only past test cases will be shown here right so if you don't want to use a shortcut you can use the options also here so you can filter based on the author you can filter based on the status you can filter based on the tags and based on the device also so all the filters are also available if you want to clear you can just clear it okay but you can also use the shortcuts for pass p and for fail f like that so it will improve your productivity right whenever you open the report you want to just see the failed test cases only just press f that's it and if you want to clear the status press escape okay and if you want to change the theme to dark then press l so like this there are so many shortcuts also available in the extend reports we will discuss those things also guys okay so to improve the productivity also extend reports is providing the shortcuts so now you have seen what exactly extend reports and how it is looking like right so let's go to the default report and let's understand so if you look at this thing right here we are not attaching any screenshot by default there is no option to attach the screenshot but you can do with some tricks and tips also you can attach the screenshots to your report in the default generated reports also but it is not by default provided option but here it is beautifully aligned right when you open the screenshots it is opening one dialog with the entire screenshot but it is not the same case with your default generated reports guys and if you look at the dashboard there is no dashboard here you don't have any chart and you don't have any option to filter by author and you don't have filtering options itself here right so if you want to only see the failed test cases there is no option here correct so there are so many features that are lagging in this default generated report or we can say there are so many additional features that are provided in the third party libraries correct so when we have a beautiful thing outside why do we need to still use the default generated report we can just go and use this one only right so that is the main purpose we are choosing the extend reports in any perspective if you see guys here there is no option to search and there is no option to provide the author details there is no option to provide the device details and there is no dashboard to clearly show you all the details and there is no information to provide the tag names or group names also properly right so all these things are actually missing from the default report that is the simple reason we are choosing the extend reports fine so now you understood how exactly the extend reports looks like right so we are going to design the reports exactly like this guys we are going to design the reports exactly like this fine so now you understood what exactly is the extend report and overview of the extend reports and why we need to choose the extend reports over the default reports correct so i hope this chapter is very useful that is for this video guys i will see you in the next video